Look on the bright side, Pete, with Sayori gone. This should go considerably faster. That's fucking dark, chat. Dot, dot, dot. I'm defenseless against these girls? No, I'm not. I'm angry at these girls. How am I supposed to make a clear-headed decision when it's like this? Would feel terrible for letting everyone down in this situation. There's nothing clear-headed about my decision. I'm motivated entirely by rage and a lust for vengeance. And besides, the club itself seems pretty relaxed. So if writing poems is the price I need to pay in order to spend every day with these beautiful girls... Right. Okay, I've decided then. I'm in, because I'm here only to bring Monica down. I'll join your literal literature club. I'll write poems filled with all of the rage, anger, and hate felt by my entire race from Adam on down, and I will shoot it upon your chest as though my heart were a cannon. One by one, the girl's eyes light up. Oh my goodness, really? Do you really mean that, Pete? Oh, I really mean it. I really mean that I am going to destroy you. It could be fun, right? Destroying Monica? Yeah, I'm gonna enjoy it. No, Pete, you need to romance Monica. Keep her close so it's easier to insert the knife. Good thought. You really did scare me for a moment. Frame rate again. I mean, if you really just left after all this, I would be super pissed. Pete, I'm so happy. Yeah, I'm happy too. I want what you want. Don't open your mouth at me either. We can become an official club now. Thank you so much for this. You're really amazing. Now, what I really am is vindictive, and I can really hold a grudge, and you're the target of said grudge. I'll do everything I can to give you a great time, okay? Um, yeah, sure, whatever. Thanks, I guess. Okay, everyone. I think with that, we can officially end today's meeting on a good note. Everyone remember tonight's assignment. Write a poem about how much I hate you. Done. Write a poem and bring it to the next meeting so we can all share. Oh, yeah, you don't worry, Monica. I got this. Monica looks over at me once more. Pete, I look forward to seeing how you express yourself. Yeah, you're going to enjoy it a lot less tomorrow when I actually bring the poem. Stop trying to... You know what? Your attempt to hurl your chest violently at me to assert your dominance? It's not going to work. You, you, that's it. No, you cannot. I will not be bowed. Can I really impress the class star Monica with my mediocre writing skills? Oh, you know what? I've had some practice. I know how to write these poems now. I already feel the anxiety welling up inside of me. I don't feel an anxiety. What I feel is a thirst for blood. Meanwhile, the girls continue to chit-chat as Yuri cleans up the tea set. For 14 year olds, they certainly have well-developed rest. Not Natsuki, she's very petite. I guess I'll be on my way then. Yeah, I got a poem to write. Don't stop asserting your dominance at me, Monica. I'm just, it's, I'm, it's not doing you any good. I'm not afraid of your breasts. I've seen the best you have to offer. I'm a broken man. You've taken everything I cared about away from me. I'm a man with nothing left to lose, Monica. I can do this all day. With that, I depart the club room and make my way home. The whole way, my mind wanders back and forth between the three girls. Natsuki, Yuri, and of course, Monica. Yeah, of course, Monica. I'm gonna kill her so hard. Will I really be happy spending every day after school in a literature club? Perhaps I'll have the chance to grow closer to one of these girls. Perhaps I'll have a chance to murder one of them. All right. I just need to make the most of my circumstances. I'm sure good fortune will find me. Yeah. Yeah, just like it found Sayori dangling from that fucking... <sighs> she hung herself from a goddamn ceiling fan. It could it have been the crossbar of a closet? That seems a little more dignified. Whatever. I'm... Vengeance is mine, Chad. You have unlocked a special poem. Would you like to read it? Yes, I would. Today I cut my skin open for the first time. It was exhilarating. I think I understand how blank feels now. I'm supposed to be the responsible one, though, so I don't think I'll be doing it again unless I decide to kill myself. I left the memento of the occasion below. Okay. I mean, we know Yuri is a cutter. So there are only Natsuki... All right, we know how to... I hurt myself today to see if I could still feel. 
we know how to do these two. So Natsuki likes happy things. Yuri likes complex words. Like she would like like a whirlwind. Natsuki likes cute stuff. So I don't want to impress either of these guys. I want to try and impress Monica. Captive is a Yuri word. Scars nature unending. Yuri word. Heart incongruent hair. I'm just trying to write a poem that sort of describes our experience here so far. Grief? Yuri word. Hope. Suicide. Yuri word. Poof. Portrait. Ocean. Feather. Just uh, Fester, we know, is a Yuri word. Okay, so we've picked three Yuri words. Actually, we've picked four Yuri words. So let's pick five Yuri words and then let's pick five Natsuki words. I want to make a poem that's a middle of the two. I don't want to romance either of these guys. So we need another Yuri word. Fester is a Yuri word. All right. Now what we want are Natsuki words. So love is a Natsuki word. Kitty is a Natsuki word. Uh, candy is a Natsuki word. Probably boop is an Itsuki word. Yep. And fireworks is an Itsuki word. Now we want to go Yuri words. Heaven sent is a Yuri word. Precious is a Yuri word. Oh, precious is a... Damn it. All right. Contamination is a Yuri word. There we go. Crimson is a Yuri word. Hmm. None of these really seem like Yuri words. Alone is probably a Yuri word. All right. Now we need Natsuki words to round out the set. So bliss is a Natsuki word. Smile is a Natsuki word. Pink is a Natsuki word. Man, I really want to pick entropy here, but no. Uh, silly is a Natsuki word. And anime is a Natsuki word. So we should have split it right down the middle. Ten and ten. Yeah, one extra Natsuki word. Hi again, Pete. Yeah, hello, you vicious, bitter, miserable monster. Glad to see you didn't run away on us. Oh, I'm not fucking going anywhere, though, bitch. Don't worry. This might be a little strange for me, but at least I kept my word. I am going to destroy you. That's my promise. Well, I'm back at the literature club. It was the last to come in, so everyone else is already hanging out. Thanks for keeping it. What the fuck happened to your face for a second there, though? Did you guys see that, chat? You saw that, right? Chat confirmed for me. You guys saw that, right? Yep, what the fuck? Okay, thank you. Thanks for keeping your promise, Pete. What? The frame rate is real janky. I hope this isn't too overwhelming of a commitment for you. Making you dive headfirst into literature when you're not accustomed to it. What the shit? Is it tilting? Yes, it's definitely tilted, chat. You're not wrong. Everything is kind of fucked up. Oh, come on. Like, he deserves any slack. I think Monica is on to us, guys. Is the background moving? It definitely tilted. The power of Christ compels you. The power of Christ compels you. Monica is some kind of eldritch god. I don't know. She's warping reality somehow. You already had to be dragged here by Monica. I didn't know if you planned to just come here and hang out or what. But if you would take it seriously, then you won't see the end of it. The only person who's not going to see the end of this, Natsuki, is fucking Monica. Speak of the devil. She's on top of the chat box. What the shit? Natsuki, you certainly have a big mouth for somebody who keeps a manga collection in the club room. Why is Monica on top of the chat box? M Monica? And Natsuki finds herself stuck between saying Monica and manga. Manga is literature. 
Swiftly defeated, Natsuki plops back into her seat. I'm sorry, Pete. The music is all fucked up now, too. Do you guys hear this? It's not... Now it's also the music that's digged up. This is hurting my brain. I'm sorry, Pete. We'll make sure to put your comfort first. Okay, could you write the tilt on the room? Because it keeps getting a little bit worse. You're, and the music is off beat. The music just went all fucky. I'm scared. Yuri shoots Nasuki with a disappointed glance. You know what? Disappointed glance was not how I expected that sentence to end when I started reading it, actually. Um, anyway. Now that you're in the club and all, perhaps you might have interest in picking up a book to read? Well, I mean, again, mostly I'm just here to murder this eldritch horror that seems to be controlling all of our fates, but sure, I guess I could read a book, too. Can't really say no either way, because I'm fucking trapped here in a stable time loop of some variety. Like you said, I'm in this club now, like it or not. So it only feels right for me to do something like that, if you ask. But wait, the music is all fucked up. It's changing the key. I didn't mean it like that. Give me some side eye if you're in to help me bring Monica down, Yuri. Come on, do it. If you don't really want to, then forget I said anything, I guess. No, it's not that, Yuri. Just give me that side eye. I want to try to be a part of this club, specifically the part that destroys the president. So even if I don't read often, I'd be happy to pick up a book if you wanted me to. Are you sure? I just felt like, well, as vice president and all, that I should really help you get started on something you might like. Yuri reaches into her bag and pulls out a book. I didn't want you to feel left out, so I picked out a book that I thought you might enjoy. It's a short read, so it should keep your attention, even if you don't usually read. And we could, you know, discuss it if you want it. Give me that side eye, girl. This, this is... How is this girl accidentally being so cute? Oh, it's not an accident. It's a carefully designed charade. She even picked out a book she thinks I'll like, despite me not reading much. Thank you. I'll definitely read it, Yuri. You enthusiastically take the book. Phew. Well, you can read it at your own pace. I look forward to hearing what you think. Wah! Wait. The world is back normal? Also, is Yuri huge right now? Yeah, we, like, zoomed way in. We got a really close-up view of her breasts, but now everything's back to normal. Now that everyone's settled in, I expect Monty to kick off some scheduled activities for the club, but that doesn't seem to be the case. Yuri's face is already buried in a book. Can't help but notice her intense expression like she was waiting for this chance. Meanwhile, Natsuki is rummaging around in the closet. I'm really curious to talk to Yuri a little bit more, but at the same time, I'd feel bad for distracting her from reading. I catch a glimpse of the cover of her book. It looks like the same book that she lent to me. More than that, she seems to be on the first few pages. Joel the girl, hey, welcome to the stream. Ah, uh, crap. I think she noticed me looking. Oh, this is me talking, sorry. She sneaks another glance at me and our eyes meet for a split second. Give me that side eye, girl. That only makes her hide her face deeper in the book. Sorry, I was just spacing out. You know, fantasizing about how I'm going to cut Monica's skin off and sew it into a suit and wear it as I dance beneath the full moon. That was the kind of thing I was thinking about. I mutter this, sensing I made her uncomfortable. While I did just talk about dancing around in a woman's skin, I can see where that would make her uncomfortable. What gods have you angered, Pete? Like, yeah, most of them is, is the correct answer, yeah. Oh, it's fine. If I was focused, then I probably wouldn't have noticed in the first place. Well, what the fuck is wrong with your face, though? But I'm just rereading a bit of... Are you sure you're reading? Are you not having a hard time? Your one eye is slowly drifting to the left there. It's, like, not even attached to your face anymore, though. What the fuck is going on? Alright, hold on a minute, chat. Like, let's just chill for a minute. I want to see how far that fucker will go before... Like, if we don't stop it, I want to see how far it'll go.
Let's just let's just let it go. Is it moving? Yeah, it's definitely moving. Okay, here we can prove it. Watch. I'll put my put the mouse at the edge of it, and then we'll just let it sit for a minute, and you guys can see how far, like how much further it drifts. I spy with my little eye. Is it actually taking the mouse along with it? Or did it stop? I think it stopped moving. It stopped. Can I put it back? Nope. That's the book you gave me, right? Um, did you notice that my left eye, or right eye rather, seems camera left, but... My right eye seems to have drifted quite far away. I'm actually reading the book as we speak while also looking directly at you. Getting some cognitive dissonance here, and I gotta say, it's a little off-putting. Up, oh, up, oh, eyes back on the face. Okay. Not for any particular reason, mind you, just that there, there's definitely some next level fucking shit going on here, and I'm pretty sure Monica is some kind of hellish elder abomination from beyond the pale, who's suddenly manipulating reality in order to derive and cause horror. Just curious, how have you come by having two copies of the same book? One for each eye, I'd reckon. One copy for the left eye, one copy for the right eye as it slowly drifts around the room. Uh... Well, when I stopped at the bookstore yesterday, and that's not what I meant. I mean, I just happened to buy two of them. Actually, no, you were forced by Monica to buy two of them. You don't have to lie. The pretense, you don't have to keep it. She's doing all of this. I see. I see right through her plot. That's what I see. Something fairly obvious here that Yuri isn't telling me, but I decide to let it go. Because I already know what it is. It's that Monica is manipulating everything from behind the scenes. She's some kind of hideous goddess. Like, she's a hideous bitch goddess. I'll definitely start reading it soon. I'm glad to hear. Is your eye going to leave again? Or is that... I mean, it looks relatively securely attached at this point. Okay. Once it starts to pick up, you might have a hard time putting it down. Sort of like Doki Doki Literature Club. It's a very engaging and relatable story. Not so much. Well, okay, I'll give you engaging. Relatable? Not really. Engaging, though? I'll give you that one. Is that so? What's the story about, anyway? A hideous bitch goddess who controls everything, manipulates everyone, and murders the woman you love? Well. Hmm. I look at the cover of the book. The book is titled Portrait of Markov. There's an ominous looking eye symbol on the front cover. Uh huh. Basically, it's about this religious camp that was turned into a human experiment prison, and the people trapped there have this trait that turns them into killing machines that lust for blood. Wait a minute. Killing machines that lust for blood? And last time we talked to Yuri, she actually drank some of our blood. Is she a Terminator? But the facility gets even worse and they start selectively breeding people by cutting off their limbs and affixing them to... Oh, that might be a little bit of a spoiler. Also, that's not really how selective breeding works. They may have gone to the Yosef Mengele School of Scientific Research little bit of a spoiler. Yeah, I'm kind of spoiled on the novel, actually. But anyway, I, I'm really into it. Yeah, all right. The book, I mean. Not the cutting off people's limbs and affixing them to random other fixtures. Not, not the thing. God, I, this game gives me riff back so often. Every single time I cut a quip, they're right there to fly. I both love and hate it. That's kind of... You know what? Fitting is how I would finish that sentence. Given the setting that we're in, that's kind of fitting. Dark? Okay, I mean, sure, it could go that way, too. You already made it sound like it was going to be a nice story, so that dark turn came from nowhere. No, really, I was sort of expecting that. Ah. Uh, are you not a fan of that sort of thing, Pete? 
No, it's not that. It's just that, you know, when it comes to cutting off limbs and reattaching and torsos and severing heads and whatnot, most of my intention in that department is focused on Monica. I want to cut off her limbs and set her head on a spike outside the gates of the school. I mean, I can definitely enjoy those kinds of stories, so don't worry. I hope so, because you're in one. Pete, did you just steal that line from Jeffrey Rush in Pirates of the Caribbean? I hope you like ghost stories, because you're in one. And then Kira Knightley does something. Yeah, I totally forgot that Yuri is into those things. No, I didn't. She liked knives and drinking blood. I'm pretty sure she's at least a serial killer. And at worst, possibly something... Uh, hmm. She showed us shy and reclusive on the outside, but her mind seems to be completely different. Yeah, you know, they say it's the quiet ones you gotta watch, and I'm keeping my eye on Yuri. <laughs> Get it? Because of the face thing. It's just that this kind of story... It's the kind that challenges you to look at life from a strange new perspective. You know, like when one of your eyes drifts about five feet to the right of your head. That kind of perspective. When horrible things happen, not just because someone wants to be evil, but because the world is full of horrible people and we're all worthless anyway. All right. I guess the nihilism is uh, black bubble text. Okay. Then suddenly, I, I'm rambling, aren't I? No, actually, you were probably the most focused and sensical you've been since we said goodbye to Sayori. <laughs> Here's a tip. Maybe pursue the other girl. <laughs> Not again. I'm sorry. I just went full evil and channeled the forces of the bleak and bitter beyond. I felt the touch of Nyarlahotep as he flowed through me and brought his will into the material plane. Uh, you know, don't apologize is maybe not fully appropriate here. If you're channeling Nyarlahotep, you know what? Maybe apologize. Don't worry, though. I haven't lost interest or anything. Nothing you could do to sway me from my quest for vengeance. There will be blood and all of it will be Monica's. I guess it's all right then. But I feel like I should let you know that I have this problem. <gasps> side eye. She's doing it. She's giving a side eye. I have this problem. Is the problem... How do I solve a problem like Mamonica? Is that is that what we're going to do here? Are we about to break into song? When I let things like books and writing fill my thoughts... My whole body... <laughs> okay. I kind of forget to pay attention to other people. So I'm sorry if I end up saying something strange or Nyala Hotep bubbles forth from the bleak darkness of the nether beyond. Please stop me if I start talking too much. Don't worry, I will. I really don't think you need to worry. No, I mean, okay, this is complete nonsense. The narrator it's nice to see is still a completely clueless idiot. You should definitely be worried if Nyarla Hotep is reaching from beyond the pale to manipulate your thoughts. That just means you're passionate about reading. Reading what? The Necronomicon? The least I can do is listen to your insane ramblings. Okay. It's a literature club, after all. Ah, side eye. Hashtag give me that side eye. That's. Well, that's true. Yep. I might as well get started reading it, right? What the shit was that? So Yuri is some kind of demonic succubus? That's what we just got a flash of, right? I'd be expecting the king in yellow to put a plate on soon. She just turned into some kind of, like, red demon thing. Did we just get a flash of, like, her true form? Y yes Yes, I got a flash of your true form. I mean, you don't have to, but... Yeah, yeah, yeah. What are you saying here? Dot, dot, dot. She didn't say anything. Just get, just get the book. Let's go. I quickly retrieved the book that I had put into my bag. All right. Is it fine if I sit here, right? I slip into the seat next to Yuri's. Uh, yeah. You sure? 
seem a little apprehensive, like, you know, maybe you're a hideous demon woman underneath that pale, delightful skin of yours. That beneath your pleasing exterior lurks a monster. Which, you know, pretty much just all of us. Some sort of succubus? That's... I'm sorry. It's not that I don't want you to. It's just something I'm not very used to. And also, the smell of your blood makes me react like Edward Cullen when Bella first walked into biology class. It's just so overpowering. I cannot help myself. I want to. I just have to get up and run from the room before I debase myself in front of the entire class by leaping upon you bodily and violently thrusting myself inside you. Get a little too twilight there? Probably a little too twilight. I see. Yeah, it's fine. Just tell me if I end up distracting you or, you know, whatever. If, like, your thirst for my blood drives you into an insane rage and you feel like tearing my head off and drinking me like a Pepsi, something like that. Just let me know and I'll go to the other side of the classroom, whatever. It's fine. I open the book and start the prologue. I soon understand what Yuri means about reading in company. It's as if I can feel her presence over my shoulder as I read. It's not a particularly bad thing. Yeah, it kind of is, actually. Maybe a little distracting, but the feeling is somewhat comforting. Yuri is in the corner of my eye. I realize that she's not actually looking at her own book. Well, one of her eyes is looking at her own book. The other one is, like, over here staring in my ear. I glance over. It looks like she's reading from my book instead. S sorry. I was bathing in the feeling of your bo You apologize a lot, don't you, Yuri? I, I do? Yep, you sure do. You know what else you do? You channel the, the darkness of Nyarlathotep from Beyond the Pale a lot, too. I don't really mean to. Well, it's okay. I mean, he's touched you and invaded your soul, and you're his creature forever, and there is no salvation for you. You are damned, damned, damned beyond all salvation. But, you know, it's okay. <laughs> Here, this should work, right? No, there's no ritual that's going to free her from the clutches of Nyarlathotep. She's done. She's his forever. I slide my desk up until it's against Yuri's, then hold the book once more between the two of them. Ah, uh, I suppose so. Yuri timidly closes her own copy. Once we each lean in a little bit, other sh our shoulders are almost touching. It feels like my left arm is in the way, so instead I use my right hand to hold the book open. Uh, I guess that makes it kind of difficult to turn the page, huh? Yeah. Yeah. Didn't it take us a while to get to this point with Yuri last time? Yuri takes her left arm and holds the left side of the book between her thumb and forefinger. I do the same with my right arm on the right side of the book. That way I turn a page and Yuri slides under her thumb after it flips to her side, but in holding it like this, we're huddled even closer together than before. It's actually kind of distracting me. Yeah, you know, we've been here, done this. It's, we know how this ends. It's as if I can feel the warmth of Yuri's face and she's in the corner of my vision. Side-eye! Hashtag side-eye chat. Hashtag side-eye. Slide the desk up against Yuri so you can take her right there, bent over across the desk. No, at this point, I'm not sure I care to have any sort of intercourse with Yuri. I'm pretty sure she is some sort of, like, apprentice demon, maybe? Oh god, we can finally do it. I don't care if it is with the demon. To turn the page. Yeah, turn the page already. Sorry. I think I got a bit distracted for a second when I said do it and you gave me the side eye there. I glance over at Yuri's face again and her eyes meet. I don't know how I'll be able to keep up with her. Ah, uh, wait a minute. Well, off to bed. Nighty night, ladies and gents. Night, Minx. Thanks for hanging out. Hashtag Pete loves the side eye. This is true. I do love side eye. You're not wrong. Look at this little smirk she's given us. You're not as used to reading, right? I don't mind being patient if it takes you a bit longer. Are you saying you'll teach me the ways of sex, Yuri? Is that what you're saying? You know, I'm like a novice to this whole thing, but you, an experienced older woman, are going to teach me the ropes? It's probably the least I can do, since you've been so patient with me. Yeah, okay. I mean, the offer of sex is interesting, but I'm pretty sure you're a monster. Not that I'm ruling anything out, by the way. You know, any port in a storm, am I right? Yuri no longer asks me if I'm ready to turn the page. Instead, I just assume that she finishes the page before me, so I turn it by my own volition. We continue the first chapter in silence. Even so, turning each page almost feels like an intimate exchange, my thumb gently letting go of the page, letting it flood over to her side as she catches it under her own thumb. Hey, Yuri. 
This might be a silly thought, but are you some kind of horrible eldritch abomination who's gonna, like, devour my heart and eat my skin? Oh, no, never mind. Main character kind of reminds me of you a little bit. This face is fucking disturbing, though. Uh, uh, no, no, I don't relate to this character at all, except for the lust for tearing the limbs from human bodies and rampaging, ravaging, and destroying the tattered remnants that remain behind. I don't, uh, physically and emotionally identify with demolishing another human being at all. Definitely not. Really? Because, uh, you seem real into it. Like, you're sweating, and there's a complete look of rapture on your face right now. I was just thinking away she second guesses the thing she says and tears limbs from torsos and beats people to death with their own bloody stumps. Kind of reminded me of you a little bit. Lucius couldn't even manage that look. You know, I still love the side eye though, chat. Side eye. Hashtag give me that side eye. Ah, that's that's what you were talking about. I thought you were talking about the limb ripping and whatnot. Sorry. I thought you meant something else about it. Some, uh, dropping a hint here. Never mind. Oh, the goddamn, the face is back, though. We didn't even get that far. Yeah, she, okay, so y Yuri is a monster. She's a monster. I don't know why that came into my head. I just got so excited about the thought of rending another human being asunder and bathing in their blood that I didn't know what else to do with myself. <laughs> uh, feeling okay there? You look a little feverish. You're sweating a lot for someone who's just sitting around reading. I mean, I'm a fat guy and I sweat when I eat meat, but, you know, you're just reading a book. Hashtag give me that side eye. Uh... Yuri's been a little fidgety ever since we started reading. Oh, side eyes back, chat. It's hashtag side eye. You can rest if you're feeling sick or something. Uh, I mean, you know, also if you're feeling deranged, possessed, uh, potentially murderous or homicidal. Your breathing is a little... My, my breathing? Yuri puts her hand on the chest as if to feel her heartbeat. I, I didn't even notice because she doesn't have a heartbeat. She is an eldritch abomination. The only thing that beats within her chest is a lust for human blood. You still want your even after all this? You know what? Yeah, clock a little bit. I kind of still do. Hashtag there will only be side eye. Hey, say what you want about Yuri, but she takes her side eye game to the next level because sometimes her side eye is literally five feet to the right of her head. Anyway, I'm fine. I, I just need some water. Okay, I mean, don't push yourself or spontaneously achieve orgasm when you're reading the pages about the people being ripped apart. Go get some water, that's fine. Yuri stands up and practically rushes out of the classroom. What on earth was that? I mean, come on, narrator, we know. 